So beating two <laughs> champions on her way to the finals is Amy Compo. She ended up actually losing to Anna Carolina in the weight class, so she didn't, uh, so she didn't make it to the final there. But here we will see a big clash of the new generation. Absolutely, and Amy Campo also, uh, I don't know if you listed it, Kendall, but ADCC West Coast Trials winner. Yes. Some crazy impressive performances there. So whether it's in the gi or in the no gi, I imagine we're gonna see a lot of Amy Campo in the finals of the respective genres of jiu-jitsu. Yeah, absolutely. One of, the, uh, one of the few who does so well in both. We see Gabriele Pisana doing a good job trying to drag Amy's right arm across the body, but Amy's able to regain her position here, starts to stand up and open the guard. Kendall, what do you think is going to be uh, Amy Campos' tools to victory versus the seemingly enigmatic Gabriele Pisana? And to be honest, I think the major thing for Amy here that she already does so well that I think gives her a good chance at winning is that she doesn't put too much um, respect in people's titles, right? Normally a rookie back belt will not come out beating Yara Suarez and Anna Carolina or winning ADCC trials so quickly. She uh, took second in ADCC trials in the East Coast as a brown belt and then won it in the West Coast as a black belt. Oh, she um, needs to be careful here. And, and while she is, you know, very careful and she is very calculated, she never goes in... Um, really like you know fearful she's always on the attack so I think that's why she's gonna do so well here. The lapel guard of Gabriela Pisania has been one of her most popular weapons such a strong attack if she's able to transfer the grip onto the leg as she's going for right now this is a kind of a big moment but ooh Amy Campo with a little bit of an interesting step back, defense right? trying to step back for the lapel. She kind of undoes that position. It is interesting though when you think about someone competing in Gia no Gi back to back like this I mean this was just um, you know, very recently when she won the West Coast Trials in California, you know, when they're training back to back gi and no gi so frequently, those lapel guards can be very, very tricky because those are intricate positions. If you're not consistently using them every day against somebody like Gabby Pisano, who is excellent there, and that is her A game, and she only trains in the gi or only competes in the gi, as far as I know, then that can get you caught up. So that could be something that is a little bit of a difficult position for Amy to deal with. But, you know, she did just escape it, so really hard to say how that's going to play out. Amy Campbell throwing her left arm underneath the leg to hopefully mitigate the lapel ability of Gabriele Pisani, but Gabby seemingly unfazed by it, just trying to use it to spin underneath, maybe looking for a, a leg entry with her right leg. We've seen this so many times this tournament, but Amy Campo. Big stack here, double under from Amy Campo. She's a little wrapped up there on the left side, but nonetheless able to elevate the hips of Gabby Pisani. Yeah, that left, that left side lapel grip uh, with her right hand of Gabriele Pisani is really Preventing and discouraging Amy Campo from elevating too hard. It's just difficult to get anything going when you have a lapel blocking your path. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, for this entire tournament, I have been Jake Watson, joined by Kendall Rusing, oftentimes by Howell Teague and Chase Smith. You can follow all the updates, all the interviews, all the replays on flowgrappling.com. Follow them on Instagram, at flowgrappling. Knee in the middle here from Amy Combo's very smart play. She was about to get tilted. Brings the knee up to kind of meditate, uh, sorry, mitigate that. Well, Kendall, you brought up a point earlier that I don't think uh, a lot of people think about too often, but imagine the supposed pressure that an athlete like Amy might be feeling here in the finals of the Absolute, and she's doing so well. Going tit for tat with three-time Blackboard World Champion as of today, Gabriele mm -hmm. Pisania, and not conceding any points. I mean, it is still 0-0 across the board. No definitive advantage either way in terms of who has almost passed or who has almost swept or submitted. So as the match goes on, I imagine with, a, with the champion, Gabriele Pisania, it would favor Amy Campo to continue doing this well. It would weigh on the mind, perhaps, of Gabriele Pisania, or so theoretically. I mean, when you look at Gabriele Pisania, it seems that she is just emotionless yeah. until her hand is raised. Yeah. Then you see the <laughs> then you see the nice smile on mm -hmm. Gabriele Pisania's face. But up until that point, it is not a scowl. It's not a smile. It is just emotionless. Yeah, it's something interesting about both athletes. They're both in this, uh, you know, newer generation. Even though Gabby's a three-time Black Bowl World Champion, she's absolutely a newer Black Belt, right? She just won her first Black Bowl World Championship in December of last year. So a newer Black Belt, just like Amy, and both of them have the same thing in common, which is one of the reasons they do so well, is they respect all their opponents, but they don't put too much weight in their accolades, right? They just go out looking for the kill. Similar to how we saw, you know, Ty and Mika run through this tournament the same way. They were going against legends, and they just act like it's a day in the office. But... Gabby Pisania, 
is, again, we said earlier, one of the most intelligent strategists I've ever seen. She has the closed guard. She has such long legs, so she'll kind of lock up a body triangle and then switch exactly when she needs to back to a regular closed guard to avoid any penalties. And Amy bringing that knee up in the middle really, really lessens the power of Gabby's closed guard. But now Gabby might come up on a two, but Amy sets her back down with that single leg position. And we're back in the closed guard with 440 left on the clock. This is a very interesting fight to behold because it seems that Gabriele Pisani is, is being stuffed at every turn, but it's also forcing Amy Campo to consistently concede closed guard over and over yeah. because it's the safest spot to be after some of these exchanges. And you kind of fall into closed guard to, to avoid falling anywhere else. Right? Absolutely. And I, I wonder as the match goes into its waning phases, those last two minutes, those last one minutes, what kind of change are we going to see out of both of these athletes to try to really win the judges' favor? Because if I'm in the final of the absolute division at Worlds as a black belt, I'm going to be very nervous possibly the entire time. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. It's interesting seeing Amy's choice of grips here. She almost gets knocked over there for a moment. Gabby's starting to underhook the leg with her right hand. She looked to want to pass the sleeve over, but Amy able to keep her left elbow inside the leg instead. And I will tell you, the uh, one of the major differences between these athletes, at least in my experience, and from what I see with the other women in the division, is Gabrielle is almost always able to power through. You know, weird saying that looking from the outside, very calculated on her part, very creative, very crafty. I'm sure she trains that way. And then she'll end up either neutral or in a dominant position after that. It's pretty wild. So different styles, um, absolutely, for these two ladies. Oh, big sweep attempt from Gabriele Pisania, but... And it won't even score an advantage because Amy was never sat all the way down. She came right up to her feet, but now... Uh, but situations like this do matter in the minds of the judges. Amy Campo has been unable to really set up anything for herself. So look at a triangle here for Gabriele Pisania, but Amy able to dig her right elbow back inside into safety. And now going double under, but Gabby's very strong with this right-handed grip on the belt. She uses this very often, keeps her opponent attached to her. She'll oftentimes sink some butterfly hooks and flip them all the way over or go for a triangle. That's what she's definitely looking for here. Get some nice elevation up into a sweep. She switches back to De La Hiva with her left leg. But Amy's base, she's almost impossible to sweep. I mean, it's incredible the way that she stays on top with someone as powerful, experienced, and talented as Gabriela Pisania. These are positions I, I think it's worth noting if you haven't watched too much of Gabrielli. These attacks, um, I mean, these are things she finishes easily on those two. And I won't say easily as if it doesn't involve effort, but once she gets to the point she's getting to with Amy, where she's tilting them all the way over, she will absolutely finish. And Amy's coming back every time. This is an interesting new development by Amy Campo here with a double under, but it's really been a single grip by Gabby Early Pisania on either side that's been stopping the forward progression of Amy Campo. And though the score is tied, Gabby Pisania has had a lot of attempts towards submissions, throwing up triangles over and over, having a couple near sweep attempts, and that all matters here as we go into the last two minutes of this match in the women's absolute final, the culmination of all the women's fights across all five days of the IBJJF World Championship. And this is the, this is the grip that I was talking about earlier that Amy Combo cannot let happen. And she will score two here with 90 seconds on the clock, but she may return the favor. They Coming immediately up on top. get up wow. on top again, Amy Campo. Wow, big sweep return for Amy Campo. Evening the score out here, two to two. But giving up the lapel yet again. This yeah. could potentially be another really tough spot. Amy Campo finds herself in, kicking Sideways out close the guard. arm as best she can. This is a smart move. Now back on top and close guard. Only one minute left, Kendall. And again, coming back into close guard is the safe option. We've seen that a couple of times. This is definitely um, a case where Gabby is con seemingly controlling the pace of the match, right? She is the one on the offense. Amy doing an incredible job, but she just hasn't been able to get the space she needs or, you know, the, the distance she needs from those lapel grips to start getting her offense going. Now, we saw Gabby lock up that body triangle. The referee walked around to check it out. Gabby released it immediately because she knows she cannot afford a penalty here with the score tied up. That would make the difference in the entire match. And with 30 seconds left. Oh my goodness, 30 she seconds. She for another score. Yeah, she underhooks the leg. She's staying very, very active here, but 20 seconds. Amy 
desperately trying to stand up to make something else happen as Gabby scoops that foot up onto the shoulder. Amy Campo needs to do something that's going to net her a submission attempt. Gabriela Pisani with a signature Oma Plata. Amy Campo trying to step back around. Only 10 seconds left for one of these ladies to score an advantage. Otherwise, we are going to go to ref's decision. And it looks like that's the direction we're headed. We're headed. And we will go to referee's decision here. What a great effort from Amy Combo, keeping just complete pace with Gabriele Pisania. But Pisania had so many submission attempts, I'd, I would be very surprised if the decision did not go her way. But we'll see as the referees raise their hands and get prepared. Here we go, and it is unanimous for Gabriele Pisani of Infight, which makes her a four-time Black Belt World Champion in about six months' time, I might add. Imagine winning four world titles in six months. Gabriele Pisani knows what that's like. Incredible showing from Amy Campo all the way through this weekend. The rookie Black Belt making a very, very big statement in the women's divisions.